Gentlemen, in the picture you've just witnessed, you've seen the underworld's challenge and your government's answer to that challenge. Now, you men have been chosen to represent your government in the fight to stamp out the criminal element of our nation. The Federal Bureau of Investigation trains you to meet the hoodlum on his own ground. It arms you to fight the gangster with his own weapon. Your training gives you every advantage over an underworld that has pursued its vicious course with total disregard for the life and property of decent citizens. But remember, there are no rules in the game of justice versus crime. All criminals are rats and should be treated as such. Your training is just beginning. Now it's up to you. Work hard, train hard. Because when you're full-fledged agents, you'll have to fight hard. Go to it. Good luck. <laughs> G-Man. Why, tomorrow you'll be mingling with some of our best criminals. If the director hadn't sent for you to act as our instructor for a few months, I, I doubt if I'd have made the grade. So you think as a teacher I was a pushover, huh? Oh, no. No, I merely meant that. I understand what you mean, Ron. And thanks for the compliment. But your real teachers are the criminals you're going to run into from now on. They'll chalk up a lesson every time you meet them. And if you don't pass, curtains. Five years ago, a soft-hearted parole board released one of our sweetest specimens. Since then, he's been mixed up in more crimes than you believe it possible for any one man to commit and get away with. We have very good reason to believe he's hiding somewhere in California with his five sons. I understand he rules them with an iron hand, and he's trained them each to be a specialist in crime. Paul Stark. He's one man we've got to get and get soon. I don't care if 50 G-men are arriving by plane tomorrow. I think the whole bunch of you are yellow. No son of mine is going to tell me whether their job is safe or whether it isn't. I make the decisions here and do all the thinking. Don't forget that. Well, I ain't, Yella. Give me your gun and I'll bump Dick Tracy. Shut up. Sit down, kid. We're going to pull off that job tomorrow at 12 o'clock, just as I planned it. And you all know what to do. Mr. Tracy's not here. I'm expecting him at any moment. Yes, I'll be glad to. Mr. Tracy's office. Oh, yes, Mr. Fields. No, Mr. Tracy's not arrived as yet. Yes, I'll be glad to. I'll tell him the moment he comes in. Goodbye. Things are coming to life around here with Tracy on his way back. Eh, uh, Gwen? I can't wait to see him. Neither can I. Let's see. It's been almost three Come minutes. Come on, you public nuisance number one. Where's Dick? Yeah, where is he? You both a little early. He hasn't arrived yet. And they're both bad detectives, too, Gwen. Dick! I was ten feet behind them all the way down the hall. Hiya, Steve. Oh, 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 it's great to see you. Well, this is what I call a real welcome. I'm glad to see you all. I want to meet a newcomer, Special Agent Ron Merton. This is my secretary, Ms. Andrews. Hello. How do you do? Special Agent Steve Lockwood. How do you do? How are you, Steve? And this is Mike McGurk, Super Sleuth. Glad to meet you. If you ever need any help figuring out things, just call on me. Thanks. And this is Junior, one of my most capable assistants. Glad to meet you, Mr. Burton. How do you do, Junior? I feel as though I've known all of you for a long while. Mr. Tracy's told me so much about you. All for you, Mr. Tracy, and all important. All right, Gwen. Oh, Steve, will you show Ron the lab while I go through these? Excuse me, Ron. Certainly. Okay. This way, Ron. Tracy speaking. Oh, yes, Mr. Ward. Surely I'll send an agent right over. Ron. Pardon me. Gee, he sure is a swell guy, isn't he? Yeah, he sure is. Yeah. No time like the present to go to work, Ron. 
The Ward Trust and Bonding Company has just requested a special agent to accompany half a million dollars across town. Your first assignment. You'll find the details on this card. Right. I'll pick you up at that bank and we'll take Junior back to school. Okay. Yes, sir. Here they come, Pa. Be deaf. Yeah, you better turn off this alley at the next intersection. But, sir, we're not supposed to leave our specified route. I know it. But I have a hunch this is not on the level. Finish those guys in a hurry. There wasn't a peep out of them. Hello, Mr. Chase. Hello, Malloy. The word bonding shipment arrived yet? No, sir. It's about eight minutes late. I was beginning to wonder about it. I'll check back over its route. If it doesn't arrive in five minutes, send out a general alarm. Yes, sir. What's the matter, Mr. Tracy? I don't know, Junior, but we're going to find out. It's almost through. Be careful you don't get a whiff of that gas when she comes open. Is wrong, Junior. Hurry it up, boys. The only car that's come out of this alley in the last 15 minutes, Mr. Tracy, was a white one storage van. Which way did it go? I believe it went down that way. Thanks. Nice piece of wood. Yeah. Went out slick. But the but the G-man, he What about the G-man? You didn't figure on gas masks. Well, come on, what happened? Don't worry. You won't cause us any trouble. 
Get plucked him. Get a gun on Champ and me. Suppose you made sure he was dead? Well, he dropped without making a sound. Did you make sure he was dead? How do you know you haven't left a witness behind who can identify you all? Slow down. What are you doing? I'm gonna make sure of that cheap man. The kid will get him. Drive to the city dump. Why, hello, kid. I'm not the kid. Now get going. Sure. Went around the corner, head in the direction of the city dump. Thanks. Okay. Slow down. That's the man I'm supposed to meet. Anybody see what happened to the men inside of that cab? It burst into flames before I got here. Maybe that man can tell you. He was the first one here. First one I ever seen. I was no more than 20 feet away when it happened. What about the people inside? Poor fellas, they never had a chance. The driver still seemed to be conscious. I tried to get to him, but suddenly the cab was a mass of blaze and flames. You live in the neighborhood? No, no, no I live over the other side of town. I just happen to be walking this way today. You know, the old business, looking for a job. Quite a walk. Yeah. Especially with a broken ankle. You'll be needing a doctor to fix that fracture. I tell you, I broke my ankle when I was trying to help those people out of Iraq. What did you do with that gun after you shot Special Agent Merton? I never had a gun. I don't know what you're talking about. Make a paraffin test with his right hand. Hello? Lockwood speaking. This is Gwen, with the hospital. Hold the line, Mr. Tracy wants to speak with you. We got him into that iron lung just in time. The nerves controlling his breathing muscles were paralyzed by two of the bullets. Mr. Lockwood's on the phone. Thank you. Hello, Steve. The doctor says Ron will pull through. That's good news, Dick. He's still unconscious, but when he comes to, we'll be able to identify that man we're holding. We've just taken a paraffin test of his right hand. Yep, they show up all right, Chief. Yeah, there's no doubt he's guilty. Lock him up. I'll be at the lab in 20 minutes. Okay, Dick. Lock him up, boys. Pa, Dick Tracy's got the kid. He's gonna pin the whole rap on him. What about the other G-man? Still living. They got him in an iron lung over at the receiving hospital. Has he talked? Not yet. He's been out like a light since they picked him up. They'll have a hard time burning the kid if that G-man never talks. He's not going to. Let's go check for those footprints we found along the bottom of the ditch. I got it, Chief! I got all the dope on Joe Hanner, the driver of that taxi cab. It was just like you said. I went to the cab company with a number of the cab's license plates, and they gave me his pictures, his fingerprints, and everything. Well, 
Joe Hanner shouldn't be hard to trace. I think I know where he's gone. I found out he has a brother living in Salt Lake City. I checked all the ticket agencies and showed him Joe's picture. A clerk for the Speedhound bus company said he remembered a guy that looked like Hanner buying a ticket for Salt Lake. Good work, Mike. That's using the old noodle. If we bring Hanner back here, a lot of missing pieces will fit into the puzzle. Why do you suppose he beat it? Very obvious. He didn't want to identify his passenger. You and Mike hop the plane for Salt Lake and bring Hanner back. Right. a great guy, Gwen. Ron's gone. It was only this morning I sent Ron in his first assignment. Gee, he was proud. Proud of that first job. I'm going to finish that job for him, Gwen. There won't be a rat left in the underworld who'll be allowed to forget why Ron Merton died. This is a cast of the tire tracks left by the car in which the gang made their getaway. Notice the distinct flaw that appears on the tire, caused by a defect in the mold used in making it. Now, there are not more than a dozen retread tire shops in the city. Check on each of them. Find one with a corresponding flaw in the tire mold. Then get a list of persons to whom such tires were sold. Get going. suspect whom they believe Hanner will identify as the man who did the fatal shooting. I guess it's all up with the kid now. Why, the best mouthpiece in the country couldn't save him. If that taxi driver puts a finger on him. Yeah, if it wasn't for him, the kid would have a chance. They'd have a hard time proving he was in that cab. I've got a plan that'll keep Hanner from ever laying eyes on the kid. No, drive straight to the ridge with that equipment. Okay. You leave in the sedan about a half an hour. I'll pick up Champ and meet you tonight at the beam station. Right. Hello, Mr. Tracy. I've located the shop where those tires are made. 203 South Norman. Wait for me there. I'll be right over. I discovered the flaw you're speaking of after I'd struck off about three sets of tires. I had the move and repaired right away. Well, that narrows the search down considerably. What became of those tires? By that fellow who owns the electrical shop across the street. Said he wanted for some friends of his. So I sold him two sets. That's him now. Thank you. We'll question him. the same kind of tires we're looking for. I'm going to follow it and see where it goes. You question the men in the shop. I figured anything was better than getting mixed up with that stock gang, so I lit out. So it was Kit Stark that did the shooting. My life wasn't worth two cents being a witness to it. Why, they'd have rubbed me out in no time at all. You guys will have to give me plenty of protection until the rest of that gang is rounded up. You'll get it, all right.
That's him. Come on. Park the car off the road, Sam. We got to step on it. There's not much time. Keep quiet and you won't get hurt. Okay, Jim, tie him up. Get up. Come on. Keep watch outside. Hey, what are you guys up to? There's a ship in the air coming in on it. You're telling us. smashed all the equipment. What ships are in the air? Flight 9 coming in from Salt Lake. And there's a low ceiling. They'll need the beam. The minute the beam cut out, they probably circle ahead of for another port. They're in constant touch with the airfield anyway. Well, can we listen in on their reports? Everything's wrecked in here. But the fellow who works the day shift has a receiving radio in his plane. It's on the field outside. Come on. I'll give it 15 more minutes. Listen. Calling to this fire port. Flight man checking in. Flight 9 calling the airport. Calling the airport. Flight 9 calling municipal airport. Municipal airport back. Go ahead, Flight 9. Flying at 3,000 feet, airspeed 180. 
Visibility poor. Beam coming in strong. Flight 9 reports the beam coming in strong, but that couldn't be. One of them kept looking at his watch, and at a certain time they cut the switch. That's it. When they cut off that beam, the rest of the gang started a false one somewhere. A false beam that is leading the ship to disaster. How long would it take you to warn the airport to broadcast a message to that plane? I could drive to a phone in five minutes. Is this ship gassed up? Yes. I'm taking off to pick up that false beam to locate its source. You get to that phone and warn the airport before it's too late. Hurry. Contact! Come in, Flight 9. Visibility still poor. Figure we've cleared the cold water mountain range. Beam signal strong. trying to do.